Hello everyone, this is Katie Mae Art. Today I'm going to be drawing a picture of Jake Gyllenhaal here on the left hand side. Um, I'm going to be using just one pencil um, and it's one of the default Procreate pencils and I'm just going to practice uh, a blocking approach that will allow me to get quite an effective result just starting from quite a basic uh, start point. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in and create a background. I do have a separate video on how to create your own backgrounds. It only takes a few seconds and just involves setting up your own brush. So recommend you follow the link to that video if you've not seen it yet and if you do want to create your own background. I'm making the background have a bit of a canvas effect. Um, so I'm using a canvas texture on my brush and just kind of blocking in a mid grey tone. So that first layer wasn't quite right so it's gone in a little bit darker and just established a really nice kind of neutral grey background that I can then work into. The pencil I'm using today is a Zixby pencil. You can find it in your sketching, uh, in the sketching section. It is one of the default brushes so no need to go out and purchase additional brushes. I'm going to start working on a new layer. Um, remember to create a new layer for my drawing this time, I don't always remember, I can be a bit forgetful. <clears throat> so the approach I'm starting off with is a bit of a Loomis method, so we're starting with the ball of the head and then I'm drawing in the, the centre line of Jake's face um, and then blocking in roughly his jaw. It's a little bit difficult to do this because you can't really see where the edge of his jaw ends and he's also got his beard and that's fading into his coat. So don't worry too much, we can um, kind of hone in on the details as we go further in on the process. Um, <clears throat> I don't always start with the Loomis method but I think I found just kind of naturally flew with that method when I was looking at this picture. Um, I do kind of adapt and adjust my methods depending on how I feel, what the reference picture looks like, um, etc. So I like to not draw the eyes until quite late on in the process, so I'm just blocking in um, his eyes going from the top of his eyebrows down to um, the bottom of his eyelid. So kind of that whole eye socket area has just been blocked in. Now Jake has quite a distinctive um, forehead, so his eyebrows um, and his brow ridge are quite um, distinctive so I think it's quite important to kind of sit back and look at your photo references and see what you recognise from pictures and what is noticeable and try and replicate that in your drawing. I've also draw drawn a line across roughly under his nose and across his lips. Um, again not worrying about accuracy too much at this stage obviously the lines aren't completely horizontal and there is like a graduation of tones so um, it doesn't matter if you're not quite right there, just need to get the rough dimensions. Then I'm blocking his hair, so he's got quite quite a lot of hair, quite thick. Um, so his skull is behind there somewhere. Again, thinking of the hair coming on from the head, you need to kind of position that correctly on your the ball of your skull that you've drawn using the Loomis method, if you have adopted the Loomis method here. So now I'm using, um, just trying to kind of pin down some of the other angles. So where does his beard sit on his face? Um, how wide is his nose? How wide is his mouth? Again, I'm not expecting to get these details correct. I'm not trying to draw the lines in too hard. I'm just kind of understanding that the starting point is the starting point and I need to start somewhere. Um, using measuring up from his nose just to kind of try and get his eyebrows lined up correctly with his nose, trying to get the width right. I find the Lewis method is a little bit trickier for me to get the accuracy correct, but <clears throat> it does come, so it's just a, a matter of following the process.
Now I'm working on one layer and I'm going to continue working on one layer. So if there's any lines that you do spot that are incorrect, you can just smudge those down or erase them slightly and knock them back. But I don't think it's bad to have like various lines, various searching lines if you're not really sure where things are. So the more I drew this pencil, the more I enjoyed it. Um, it is important to kind of vary the angle of your pencil and the, and the pressure you put through the pencil. Um, if you're building up an area of tone, then you can go with your pencil almost parallel to the, um, to the screen and almost rub the screen with the edge of the pencil to get kind of a soft tone. If you're very sure of your line, then you can kind of press harder and put your pencil more um, perpendicular to the screen so it's a case of making sure you have a variety of those different lines to get the effect you want. <clears throat> now the, the reference picture on the left I chose deliberately um, the photographer is an excellent photographer and this picture really has a very high amount of contrast like some of the other drawings so I think it makes it a little bit easier for these um, this technique to be put into place because the, the photographer has already given us kind of almost like a map or a guide um, to work to um, and a lot of the decisions have already been made for us in the way he's photographed it and the fact it's black and white. Um, I really like working from excellent reference photographs or a masterworks um, because in some ways a lot of the decisions have been made for you so you can kind of, by copying those, you can observe what works and what doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> Kind of figuring where the ear is. I actually moved this along later on because I realised it was in the wrong place but I think it's just good to start from somewhere. So at the moment this doesn't look like Jake really at all I would say <laughs> but that's okay. Um, lightness is a fickle thing um, and it's all in you know millimetres of detail so it's not something to worry about too much. I think at this stage you just want to make sure it looks like some kind of person. Um, use your squinting, so squint your eyes and look on the left and look on the right and ask yourself if this looks like a person or does this look like a kind of deformed alien and if it looks like a deformed alien then there's something you need to fix right now that can't really wait. But if it kind of looks like a person then I think you're doing good. You can carry on the process. If you are really struggling though with it looking like a deformed alien then you can use the technique of dropping in the reference picture. I think sometimes that helps if there's something going wrong and you really can't figure out what it is. But for now I was kind of okay with this. Um, I definitely recognise that it wasn't perfect. There was areas of it that needed fixing but close enough for now. <clears throat> so I'm now kind of establishing the outline of my block in and and then what I'll do next is once I've kind of dialed that in once I've made the decision of where things end then I'll go in and, and kind of block those areas in with some shadow. The areas that I always find really tricky is areas where there is a soft graduation of shade so for example on the cheekbone on the left hand side that kind of merges into the beard and below his bottom lip you can see he does have a beard um, where do you, you know, if you had to posterize that into black and white, where would you draw that line? And you'll see that I make this decision in a second, but I'm the same with the, the moustache as well, just trying to figure out where to put that line, where I'm going to make that jump from going from dark to light. It's not something to fret about too much though, um, because at the end of the day, once you bring in the shade, you're going to be, you're going to be kind of that, that imaginary line is going to disappear anyway, it's just you need to put it somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing now. I ended up deciding to go with, um, to bring the line of the shadow along his bottom lip and then, um, yeah, just, just kind of almost round, wrapping around his chin there. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit, this is the boring bit, I'm just going to go in and fill in the areas of tone with some um, hatching. I'm not pressing the pen too hard. I am applying some pressure though just for kind of to speed things up. Um, and I'm just holding the pencil a very 
cute angle, just trying to get, um, almost rubbing it across the screen to get that layer of tone built up quickly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm filling in his eyes dark. Obviously there is light in his eyes, there's quite a lot of light, but I just find for me, it makes things much simpler not to even dive into that level of detail right now. That's something I can come in a later date and decide if I want to bring in the details around the eyes. For now, it's like he is a lost soul that is coming, visiting us from the haunted afterlife. So his eyes are just black holes in his face. Um, yeah, that's my usual approach, I'm afraid to say. So I've talked a bit about this on other videos. Really, um, the idea is in getting this posterized version of the drawing, it allows you to kind of dial in on what you're doing what's wrong about your drawing it's just like it just makes it a little bit easier somehow i don't know what it is about our brains but seeing that kind of posterized version you can spot where the errors are a little bit easier so this is just a really good next step once you've got that initial drawing in i'm just kind of pinning down the outline a little bit not leaving it too open um I've purposely made the texture of the dark areas quite rough. Um, I do refine it a little bit later on, but I just find it just looks quite interesting. So I just quite like it as a technique to kind of have that dark area really kind of noisy. Um, but yeah, I can wind it in and refine it later on. So actually when you squint on the left and the right, it's not perfect, but it's getting closer, you can kind of see it's, it's kind of getting closer to Jake. I don't think if I just saw the picture on the right, I would recognise that, that right now is Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, but it's, it's closer, it's getting closer. So what I would suggest is to set your eraser at the same as the same pencil and also your smudger as the same pencil just to make things simple. Um, if there's areas that you don't like, for example, I don't really like the the hatching, like the hatching got a bit messy on the right side of his face. So what you can do is just come in with your eraser and go over that area and then go back over it with the pencil and just rotate between the pencil and the eraser and you end up with a really even nice tone if you do use that method. <clears throat> so there you go, I'm pr pretty happy with that, it's like, you know, stage one, block in. I've left some of the lines on the face, to kind of as a map, because I think they do help. Um, and now what I'm going to do is go in, maybe even up the tone in some areas, but really the next stage of this is to work on my edges and turn it into more of a 3D drawing. I did come in with on a separate layer and just add a few highlights just because they sometimes help me a little bit. These aren't going to be the final highlights, I'm going to go back and refine, but I just sometimes find these a little bit helpful because it gives me something, kind of a light tone to work towards, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and just immediately adding those highlights just turns it from something very 2D to something quite almost quite 3D, I find, which is quite fascinating. So yeah, the bottom of the face is kind of turning away a little bit. Obviously his bottom lip is pouting out a little bit, so it's got a little bit of a highlight, but just, I guess, restrain yourself from adding any highlights in the bottom there. So um, really, if you look at that, the shave his bottom lip very closely, it's, it's nowhere near as bright as the brightness on the top of his head. Um, it's actually closer to the, the shadow around his eye, so yeah, make, make sure you keep the highlights, I'd say, or above the top lip and um, the, and anything below the top lip, you can just kind of make sure you, you kind of keep the shadow there as well. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating the layers that I'm not using and just kind of grouping them together. It's just a way of keeping things tidy. I do have a video on how to use Procreate, which goes into some of those tips and tricks, so I'll link that in case you need it. So I sped this up two times. This drawing ended up taking me a little over an hour, so it just felt a little bit long for a, a video in real time. Um, so yeah, I've just sped it up a little bit. I'm 
I'm still working on building up that shadow. It was noisy, it was a little bit too noisy for me, so so yeah, just a little bit of a refinement there. But now it's got to the stage where I'm pretty happy with it. So what we're gonna do now is work on the the edges, the turning of the form, bring in a bit more tone. So you can see here that the areas I'm highlighting there is um, more of a gradual turning, so they're soft edges. So there's three types of edges, soft edges, um, there's also hard edges like the ones under his top lip, and there's also lost edges like the area I'm just showing you now. So lost edges are where you can't even see an edge at all, um, either it's the same tone or the same colour as the, the area behind it. So although there's an edge there, you can't even see it in the drawing. So finding those lost edges, those hard edges and soft edges and making sure you maintain a balance of those in your drawing is what gives a drawing a really effective look. <clears throat> so here I'm just setting my smudge brush to the same brush, so the 6B. Um, I use the, the smudge brush quite selectively. Um, it's like a highlight you want and, and those kind of lost edges. You want to make sure you have areas of very you know, very soft areas, but you need to use them sparingly, otherwise your drawing is going to look weird or mushy. So yeah, um, a little bit of smudging is good though, especially around the edges I find. <clears throat> so just adding a bit of tone on the bottom of his mouth, like I said, it's it's kind of his, his head, think of it like an egg, so the bottom of his chin is rolling away from the light, so it really is in shadow, so I need to kind of add in a bit of tone there. The beard is always a tricky one. I actually love beards. Um, you can get a bit kind of wild with them and just do whatever, because I think you don't need to draw the exact hairs you see. What you need to draw is like the essence of the beard that you see. Um, with this, you want a very dark background and then come in with an eraser and perhaps just pick out a few of those, those beard hairs that you see in order to kind of build up a, a, the look of the beard, I would say. <clears throat> so here you can see like in I'm trying to get those combination of hard edges and soft edges and lost edges even in an area as small as like the his left nostril <laughs> It will still have all of those edges, or at least that's my intention. So I'm really looking hard for those when I'm drawing the drawing. So I slowed the video right down for a bit, it was going quite quickly. Um, I think it's good sometimes to just see that I'm not racing along at the speed of light. I am working quite carefully on different areas. Um, I'm making sure I zoom in and out to check my work. Um, but really, this is the this is the fun stuff. You can just you've got an iPad. You can park on the sofa in front of the TV. Um, you can sit in bed and do it, all wrapped up and cosy. You can just sit there and noodle on these drawings and just have a lot of fun with them. Um, <clears throat> building up, you know, building, working on these areas, building up, making decisions, it's it's a slow process and you don't always make the right decision the first time, sometimes you need to have a few goes at it, sometimes you learn the face as you're drawing it, um, there's a bit of trial and error involved, so you know, give yourself some time, figure it out, but just enjoy the process of observing and replicating what you see, really. And you're not bl blindly re replicating, you're still consciously looking for certain things in your drawing, so you're looking for those different types of edges. You're pausing and just like blindly copying and just to look at what you've done and think, how do I think about what is going, what do I like, what don't I like? Um, and just keep working it that way. <clears throat> The 
I do find myself using the smudge brushes on those kind of smooth areas, so like the nose is usually quite smooth, cheeks, forehead's usually quite smooth, so those are good areas where you can come in and bring in that, that smudge brush to some great effect. Especially around areas of light, I find, um, you know, smudging, smudging light areas and then having some sharp highlights looks quite effective. I don't like areas where the dark is too, you know, there's no, there's just a big blob of dark colour. So what I'm doing now is I had a little bit of that. So I'm actually coming in with the eraser and I'm making it a lot lighter than you can see in the picture on the left hand side. But that's so I can really see those edges um, and really kind of focus in on, and kind of highlight those edges where things are turning. <clears throat> But yeah, there's definitely a lot of trial and error because you try things and they don't work and then you need to figure out why they don't work and what's wrong with them. It's quite a fun process. So here I'm going back to that luminous line of the, the middle of his face. I think a lot of the time when pictures go wrong is when we lose track of the centre line and we try and straighten people up. So once I did that, I noticed that his mouth wasn't quite right and it wasn't in quite the right position. Um, it's still not now. I think I'll go and fix it a little bit later on. But I just, once I did that, I could spotted that his mouth wasn't correctly aligned in the center of his face. And I just went in and fixed that. <clears throat> so remembering the head is like, an, like a weedy spherical object, a bit like an egg. So that area that's away from the light on his left hand side of his face, just bring in a bit of shadow there to give more of a feeling of 3D and straight away that makes a big difference on the, I guess, the 3D effect of his face. So the area that I've worked on most so far is kind of his nose and mouth and that's the area I'm happiest with right now and has like a little bit of an essence of that. Um, of Jake so it's just a case I think sometimes of just spending investing the time um, and working on things until they look right and I am limited here I'm as I say I, I worked on this for about one hour and ten minutes I think um, I've got a picture at the end of what it looked like after I worked on it another half an hour and even that made a big difference so um, I'll share that with you guys as well <clears throat> So here I'm going back to that centre line that I was just talking about and spotting that <clears throat> actually if you draw the centre line in with a little eraser mark you can see that he's got a lot more, that the lips aren't centred. So so that was what was throwing it off. Um, I actually left here the lip um, too short on the left hand side and actually when I measured up there I could see yeah it's, it's lined up with that, that nostril so it should be coming out more. And as soon as I fix that he lost that appearance of having like a swollen upper lip. Um, so yeah, sometimes little things like that can really make a big difference.
so I took a little break at this stage just to look. Um, I went out of the room for a bit just to see what was wrong. Um, one thing I noticed is the his hairline on the right hand side of the face wasn't quite right and that was perhaps what was throwing things off. Um, so yeah, it's important to take those breaks and go away and think or look at something else for a little bit. Um, when I fixed that, then I realised his ear was in the wrong place. Um, I started off by sort of bumping along with liquefy, but then decided no, it's just easier to go in and fix it manually. I guess redraw, move it along, um, rather than keep trying to kind of nudge it around with a liquefy tool. Not that there's anything wrong with a liquefy tool. But once I fixed that, I was like, oh yeah, that looks a lot like him. So just a very minor, minor change really, that had quite a major effect. I have speed the video up um, two times just because these kind of minor adjustments can be quite boring to watch. Feel free to kind of scoot along to the end of the video if you want to see how it turns out. Um, if you find these kind of me tweaking things a little bit tedious but I think sometimes if you're interested it's interesting to watch um, <clears throat> so so yeah um, I'm gonna be quiet for a bit uh, just watch and enjoy
So the video is close to done now. Um, you can see when I get zoomed in quite close, it's actually going to quite, look quite interesting. And this is really the, the bit of the painting that I like, or the drawing that I like the most. The eyes I've left out. Um, I later decided it looked a little bit creepy, but sometimes they can look quite effective. I was, I was really in two minds about what to do with those eyes, whether to draw them on or leave them. Um, sometimes it can be really like quite interesting and effective to leave the eyes out I don't know what, what do you guys think do you prefer it with without the eyes and if you want to see what it looks like after I added the eyes in then um, I did I've actually added one onto the end of this video so you can scoot along to the end and take a look if you're curious um, yeah I don't know I think it's like an interesting look to not have eyes in the drawing maybe I don't know and one thing I noticed is because <clears throat> he's got a quite pr prominent brow bone um, the curve of his eyebrows is quite unusual so actually the side of his eyebrow is almost quite in the light so um, yeah it's just little things like that you don't really notice at first sometimes it takes a little while so I think once I fix that then maybe his eye did look a bit too much being all in shadow so much I don't know um, I've got lots of drawing demos where I have drawn the eye so if you want to learn how to draw an eye maybe scoot over to one of those um, I apologise, I'm not going to draw his eye in this video. Um, so now I'm just going around the edge and just smudging a little bit artistically just to kind of give it a kind of wispy, wispy sections. Um, so yeah, that's just dragging, using this, the smudge brush to drag sections of colour out of the drawing, I guess, to, to kind of really give those extreme soft edges, lost edges. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I say it's pretty much it. It's never really it. Um, go around, to tidy the edges up a little bit. Um, just kind of give it a finished look. It's quite difficult. Like, do you just crop the bottom out and just leave it like that? Do you include the bottom and just kind of add some like little artistic flourishes? I don't know. Um, I have varying approaches. When I was recording this video, I kept going, and it's just, it's almost done, it's almost done, and then I'd like start, you know, going off on a tangent, like drawing some bits of the face. Um, every time you think it's done, you see something new you need to fix. I mean, that's the annoying thing about drawing and being an artist. You think you're done, you put it on the wall, and then the next day you spot something about it you want to fix, um, which is why it took me a long time to put my art on the walls. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, mostly they annoy me. So I think this is kind of where I stopped really. So it's a good end point. Obviously he looks a bit like he's um, deeply tortured with that lack of eyeballs, but I think it looks pretty cool. It doesn't look a huge amount like Jake, but I think it looks pretty interesting. And I was really happy with the, the result I got in the time I had. Um, so yeah. And this is a version of him with eyes actually a lot better so in this example i left it at this stage hope you found this useful have a good day everyone